What's going on everybody? My name is Chris the Chaos Gamer and welcome back to UPL Season 1. This is week 10. Um, I literally just finished recording week 9 because as I explained in the last as I explained in the last one, um, as I was trying to get oh my god, as I was trying to get these guys straightened away, or trying to get the layout straightened away. Um, I it went on a little bit longer than expected. Anyway, I explained it last time. Um, so this is week ten. This was against um, Craft Five Seven Seven Three Eight. Um, so I was I wasn't overly scared about his team. Um, anyway, so we're just gonna go straight into the team analysis because I don't want to leave this for too long. And, uh, yeah, so, I don't know why I did the hand thing, by the way. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go straight into it. Uh, we were, we decided to rock Lycanroc, see what I did there. Uh, <laughs> holding the Choice Scarf, uh, with, specifically with No Guard, by the way. Uh, with Crunch, Rock Climb, Brick Break, and Stone Edge. Um, I had Crunch... For his Mega Gardevoir and Delphox, which his Mega Gardevoir, he brought every single week. So I was like, okay, his Mega Gardevoir is definitely going to be, uh, definitely going to be a thing. So I needed something to take that on. So that's why Crunch is there. Um, he also he also brought Delphox for most of his other battles as well. So I was like, okay, well, we have something here. Brick Break for his Bisharp and Red Ice and Snorlax. Um, and then we got Stone Edge for Thunderous as well as Delphox. And Rock. <laughs> Honestly, there was no reason why I picked uh, Rock Climb because all of the moves that I needed to use for him was the Crotch. Uh, cr crunch, Brick Break, and Stone Edge. So I literally just put Rock Climb in there just because. Um, next up, we got our, uh, our nice set of pair of keys. Jingle Jingle the Clef Key, Rockin' Leftovers, uh, with Prankster, of course, Rockin' Thunder Wave, uh, Flash, Flash Cannon, Spikes, and Play Rough. Clef Key was mostly going to be our setter. Uh, for setting spikes, slowing things down with Thunder Wave, uh, and just in the off chance, like, he doesn't have the greatest special attack stat, so I, just in the off chance that he did need to do a bit of attacking, uh, I gave him Flash Cannon for Mega Gardevoir, and as well as Play Rough for his Flygon. Pretty self-explanatory, basically just making sure Spikes was set up, Thunder Wave was set up. Because I don't think he had a spinner, so uh, Spikes kind of played, uh, played a nice bit of role in that. Next up we got Love Me, or Mimikyu exactly the same setup as last time as last week uh rock and life orb with substitute play rough shadow sneak and sword stance um basically same as last week uh late game sweeper sword stance getting plus two increase while the disguise is up substitute just in case things get hairy play rough for massive stab, stab damage and shadow sneak for priority pretty self-explanatory with mimikyu Next up, uh, third eye or Espeon, same, again, same thing as last week. Rocking Choice Specs with Hidden Power Ice, Psychic, Shadow Ball, and it was supposed to be HP Fighting, but mm, I, like I said last week, Showdown let me, Showdown let, allowed me to pick two, eight, two Hidden Powers, but when it came to the battle, it went HP Ice twice instead of HP Ice and Fighting. It didn't matter anyway. Um, I didn't need. I didn't use HP fighting at all. Um, but I had HP ice for his Flygon, Ludicolo, and Don Fan. Psychic, just like last week, because it's Psychic, strong stab type move that he has, and Shadow Ball, and basically Shadow Ball for for extra coverage as well. As, um, basically, just for extra coverage. And HP fighting was actually the first, was actually supposed to be for the same thing, but just for extra coverage. Um, but never, uh, never used it. Never happened. So we can just uh, forget about that. 
Um, we brought in Nepic, our Quagsire, again. Rock and Light, uh, Leftovers with Skull Earthquake, Recover, and Ice Beam. Exactly the same set as last week. Uh, Skull and Earthquake because those are the best stab titans that he has. Uh, recover for Longevity because he's a wall. And Ice Beam uh, for coverage. Uh, so pretty self-explanatory. Nepic was exactly the same set as last week. Uh, but we also have Airplane Mode Artogekiss. Now, I, <laughs> it's funny because now that I actually get to talk about Togekiss, I can actually say this. I've had a couple of people actually tell me that they love the name that I picked <laughs> for Togekiss being Airplane Mode. Um, so I just felt like I had to say that rocking, uh, he was rocking the Life Orb with Serene Grace because it, ha it, it basically has to be. Uh, with Air Slash, Nasty Plot, Aura Sphere, and Roost. Um, Serene Grace, Air Slash is like almost guaranteed because Air because with Serene Grace, Air Slash, instead of having a 30% chance of flinching, it now has a 60% chance. So I was just like, has to have it. Has to. <laughs> um, basically using a, basically Togekiss would set up more of a staller. Uh, with the Air Slash double, uh, double with Serene Grace, like I just explained. Nasty Plot, because um, Togekiss can take hits to a point. His, so I gave him Nasty Plot just in the off chance that he does survive a hit, or if I, um, if I think he's, it, basically, if I think he's going to switch in, uh, yeah, make a switch. Or lay down uh, spikes or whatever. So nasty plot is there so that I can get a plus two stage increase on my special attack stat. Or sphere for coverage because or sphere will hit very hard and roost. Um, and that will also give me that chance to lose that flying type uh, for the rest of that turn. Um, so that he can't hit me with a super effective Thunderbolt or whatever. So, that was the team that I ran for week 10 against Kraft of the San Diego Pichus. Um, and, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoy the battle, and I will see you guys next time.